Always remember that God loves you, and that's the message that the church has to share with you. When you leave this place, God loves you, no matter where you're at, in your walk, no matter if you decide to walk out and never come back, he loves you. And that is what I want you to remember today. Um, Randy usually does a blessing, but I'm, I'm not there yet. Um, but I would like to open the floor for people who would like to share their testimony. Or if something happened this week and you were just like, wow, God is amazing. And so I'll leave the floor open for anybody that would like to share. <laughs> I'm going to read um, from Acts 9. And this sermon that I'm going to do today actually took place about three years ago, and I was in a very dark place when this sermon arose. So I'm going to read from Acts 9, Saul's conversion. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters, uh, for letters to the synagogues in Dam Damascus, so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, whether man or woman, he would take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he, as he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you prosecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are prosecuting. He replied, now get up, go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound, but did not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could not see anything. So he led them by the hand into Damascus. For three days he was blind and did not eat or drink anything. In Damascus there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called to him in a vision, Ananias. Yes, Lord, he said. The Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on the straight street, and asked for a man from Tar Tar Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. Lord, Ananias answered, I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And he has come here with authority from the chief priest to arrest all who call on your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go, this man is my chosen instrument to carry my name before the Gentiles and their king and before the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me to you so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately something like scales fell from Saul's eyes, and he could see again. He got up, was baptized, and after taking some food, he regained his strength. Well, uh, Saul spent several days with the disciples in Damascus. At once he began to preach in the synagogues that Jesus is the Son of God. And all those who heard him were astonished and asked, Isn't he the man who raised havoc in Jerusalem among those who call on this name? And hasn't he come here to take them as prisoners to the chief priest? Yet Saul grew more and more powerful and baffled the Jews living in Damascus by proving that Jesus is the Christ. And so when I read this, I just, I couldn't understand, like, how did Paul do it? 
well, Saul, from where he was and the things that he did to just go on and become so powerful in Christ, you know, like I couldn't understand it. And I asked the Lord, I'm like, then what's wrong with me? I called on you, I feel new, but something's broken. Like, I can't go forward. I'm at, I'm at a stalemate. And this is, I'm, I'm going to share with you how God answered me. And when he answered me, he sent me a vision of umbrellas. And because my mind is like that, I understood the concept because I always had bad luck with umbrellas. Every time it rained, it broke. It would fly that way, and I would be left with a handle. <laughs> All my life. So nobody in my family would buy me umbrellas because I was just a breaker of umbrellas. So when God put that image in my head, I'm like, oh. Because no matter how broken that umbrella gets, the handle stays. And that's God. When that, even when that umbrella is broken and gone, God's holding on. Even when there's nothing left of that umbrella and that umbrella walks away, God's holding on. Till the end of time, he will be holding on and waiting. So this is what, how it went. We're born. God has knitted us in the womb, it's said in Psalms. And he knows our most inner parts. But as we go on with life, like even through childhood, we end up losing parts of ourselves. One big one is abandonment. The next is abuse. And it, you know, the world just keeps taking pieces. Not your head. <laughs> you know, divorce. The loss of a child. And the pain just gets so overwhelming. Over and over, the world's just taking. And taking and we just concentrate on that hurt and pain that everybody's caused right up until there's only a very little bit left of us because by a certain time in our life we're ended up with this little piece that's left and some of us have called this little piece the last straw. Hope is gone. I give up. You know, people facing addictions, we just, we can't get over these things. And so, this is where I was. And it was dark. And I know it's dark. And I know it's a very scary place. And I know that it's not just me that's been there in that darkness. And for me, this was the best place in my life. Because only when I got here did I meet Jesus. This is where I met him. When I was on my last leg, I'm done. And I called to him. And he, okay, you can put this one down. And I called to him, and let me find this scripture. And he said, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. 
For some reason, my mind only caught the beginning of that scripture. So I called on to Christ at that moment. He came down onto me, and I'm new. Okay? So then, in 2012, he called me. You're going to be a pastor. Okay, I'm on fire. This is great. And then I get to a point by 2019, and I go to Randy, and I'm like, no. I don't know what's wrong with him. I don't know what's wrong with me. But there's something is not working. I'm broken. I have, I understand that, yes, he made me new, but I don't understand anything else. And I was yelling to God, God, please, you called me. What do you want from me? And he would keep yelling back. Hold on. Okay, hold on. He would keep yelling back. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever lo loses his life for me will find it. What good, um, what good will it be for a man if he gains the whole world yet forfeits his soul? Okay, I've given you everything. What else do you want from me? I said, Lord, I can't stand at a pulpit and say, hey, follow Jesus. Why? I don't know. I don't got the answer. How, how, how does that work? So then, in the parsonage, there's this dark room, illegal room without a window. And I was laying there, and I'm like, God, I'm done. Calling everybody, I've done it all. I don't, I'm done. And he said to me, he's like, whoa, slow down. He's like, we got to go back. I said, okay. I wasn't really listening because I was pissed off at this time, like I was done. He said, go back to that moment when Jesus made you new. When I made you new. So I did. I said, okay, I'm back there. He's like, what did you do next? I said, well, I was on fire. And I knew that I was going to live for Christ. So then, as I knew, I grabbed on to my old self. And I dragged my old self along with me. Because I'm safer with old self. This is, reminds me where my sin is. This reminds me of all the bad I've done. This reminds me about the people hurting me. All the abuse and the anger. So I got to keep old self. So, you know, at the beginning, you got that energy. You can go. But as the years went on, old self gets heavy. Old self gets real heavy. And then you realize that if you're holding on to old self, you and following Jesus, there's no way. There's no way. So in that dark room, on the November 26th, 2020, I had to let go. And I held on to Jesus. And let me tell you something, when you hold on to Jesus, things happen. <laughs> Amazing things happen. And this is exactly what happens. Come here, umbrella holder. You are new. But when you're holding on to Jesus, come down here closer. Oh. 
<laughs> when you feel abandoned, bring it down a little bit. He's going to send his love. Okay? When you feel like the world's against you, he's going to send his acceptance, his acceptance. When you're mad at the world, can't do it anymore, he's going to teach you forgiveness. Okay? He's going to send his grace, his hope, his strength, his patience, his peace, his joy, his compassion, his courage, his wisdom. Don't we often need that wisdom? And he will send you his holiness because you cannot be holy by yourself. Jesus makes you holy. He loves you. And when you hold on to Jesus, he's building you up. The world can't take away from you no more. No more. Okay? So you just stick on to Jesus, and I know it's hard, because I've been there. I'm still there. But hold on. Learn to let go. He is your past. He is your present. He is your future. Amen? Let it all go, and you will be new. You will be new. And he loves you, and he will wait for you. So no matter where you are, if you're still holding on to old self, that's okay. Because he's still holding on to you. And I have a song that my kids listen to that I want to share with you today before I end in prayer. Thank you. We are so grateful to be here that you led us here today because you love us so much. And God, this week, just keep reminding us to hold on to you, that we are new creation. Once we call out your name, we are new. And once we're new, we can share. And we can become bold and loud for your name, just like Paul. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for everything. I cannot stop saying it, just thank you. And I love you. And I know that you love me. And I know you love them. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.